All right, so today I'm gonna to be doing a teardown of this Uniden BC75XLT scanner. And the reason why I'm going to be tearing it down is I'm going to attempt to repair the LCD screen on this thing. So if I plug this in, that is supposed to say charge. If I turn this on, you can kind of see all the, uh, this is supposed to say scan scrolling across the screen. And this should be the volume adjustment. And that is uh, clearly, not anything legible so anyway i'm going to try to tear this thing apart and we'll see if we can't like realign the zebra strips in here in order to uh hopefully fix that lcd problem and we'll also take a look and see what's inside of it as well So this thing comes apart fairly nicely. Uh, the front part pops off and it has the little keypad sort of membrane buttons which look like they would come out of there but you know little carbon contact pads that make contact with the uh, circuit board down here that's pretty standard on stuff like this. And then there's a couple of contacts for the speaker so the speaker is not soldered in or anything so that comes apart really nicely. Now the first thing that I do notice about this is that the LCD doesn't have a zebra strip on it. It's one of these uh, like hot bar attachment type things. So I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be able to do much to it, but uh, there's really nothing on this side of the circuit board. It's just all the contacts for the switches. And then these guys are the, the uh, battery holder contacts down here. And I don't think there's any other components there besides the LCD. So far, I think all the screws that I've pulled out of this have been the same. So. That's also kind of nice from a reassembly standpoint. All right, so looking at this, I think there's two different boards. It looks like there's another one down in there that has this BNC and the, uh, the encoder on it. So I'm hoping that this will just kind of come out. careful enough with it, it should. I'm stuck in one of the battery contacts or something. There we go. And then this part is what's gonna have all of the uh, actual RF stuff. So that's got the shielded can in it and this part's still quite heavy. And this side of the circuit board's got a lot of uh, different processing stuff on it, it looks like. So this is the whatever chip they're using to control that, and that's got a firmware version on it. It'll peel that sticker off in a bit. This is the connector that goes to the other side, or this other circuit board down here. And then we're gonna have battery charging circuitry, and then this switch is for um, selecting whether you're using alkaline batteries or rechargeable batteries. That basically just disables the charging circuit. But my main goal here is to fix the LCD, so let's see if we can't fix pop this guy out. A couple little clips. I think it should just hinge off of this board. Looks like there's quite a bit of lead here, really. And there's the LCD itself. It just kind of popped out of its holder. I was kind of thinking that would be a module that would stick together, but I guess it's not. I'm trying to be careful with this now. But what I'm hoping is that maybe I can reheat this connection here by my fingers, and that may help the uh, connection to the LCD. It could also be the connection that's on the LCD itself here, which would be not great, but maybe what I'm kind of thinking right now is that I try to power this guy up and see if I can just push on that connection and that may uh, help it. I'm not sure if it'll power on without being plugged into the, uh, the rest of the board here. But that's what I'm going to try to do because our power input is on this board and I think it may power up without the rest of that circuitry. All right, so that's probably some kind of an error, I'm assuming. P 
pushing on this is doing something, so maybe just maybe that's the issue. I'm not really sure what originally happened to this thing to uh, cause all these issues with it. But anyway, maybe I can help it by trying to heat that up and make a better connection to the board. All right, so I did manage to get it fixed. As you can see, it's now showing that it's scanning through the different banks and everything on the LCD works. So I push this down, it says volume and I can adjust the volume as it should. Now, when I first tried to fix it, I just kind of went after it with a soldering iron. You can kind of see what I did there on the back side of this uh, connection. You don't want to do that. So I actually just Google searched uh, unit in BC 75 XLT display problem and somebody's video popped up and he said to just take your soldering iron on a very low temperature. I used 400 degrees and just kind of rub it along this area where there's this little groove. So I did that and then I accidentally bridged out one of these connections when I was first messing with it. So I went back and fixed that and after doing all of that, the display is now functional again as it should be. But anyway, let's go ahead and continue to dig into this thing and then I'm gonna to try to put it back together and hopefully we still have a fully functioning scanner. All right, so this is the back of the board with the LCD on it. So looks like this is our main chip. All the uh, firmware version information is on that little sticker. I'm sure that's what that is. Let's go ahead and peel that guy back and see what runs this thing. So anyway, this guy is the chip that runs the show, it looks like. Probably controls the LCD and the uh, keypad and it interfaces with the rest of the circuitry that does all the RF stuff. So I believe that the number on that top of that chip is RF52L3AACNFP. And that brings up absolutely no search results on Google. Let's try the bottom number, that's 324A00. The numbers on that chip don't pull up any information, and my guess is that the chip that's on here probably is some kind of standard microcontroller or something along those lines, but it probably has custom silk screen on it that Uniden uh, had it ordered with, so we're not gonna be able to find any information on that chip, but I'm sure it's just uh, here to drive the keypad and the LCD. And Okay, so this thing is just a quad op amp. I'm assuming this guy's gonna be memory because there's gonna be some form of EEPROM on this. It could be internal to the chip, but I'm assuming there's some form of storage because of course this thing can store, uh, I think like 300 different channels that you can program in manually. All right, so yes, this one is a two wire serial E squared PROM as the data sheet describes it. A lot of passive components. This crystal I'm assuming is going to be for the main chip here. This chip appears to be a USB to serial converter which makes sense considering its location and that it looks to be connected to the USB port. Looks like we have some form of power supply circuitry going on in this area, hence the inductor and the capacitors and whatnot. This area looks like it might be for the battery charging circuitry. So this may be some form of like LM317 and then this is uh, to set the current going through it because this just uses a couple of uh, double A's and you can use NIMH or alkaline batteries. Of course, if you're using uh, NIMH batteries, you can charge off the USB port. That is the connector that goes to the other board. There's not really a whole lot else on this board. I'm not really sure where the audio amplifier is because there's gotta be something somewhere that drives the speaker. Of course, the contacts for that are on the back here, but there's no circuitry on the back, so I'm not real sure what's driving that. All right, so we'll go ahead and take a look at this board, and I already uh, looked up some of the chips on this, but anyway, this is the front side of it. I'm not going to take this board all the way out of here because I don't really want to damage anything, and I'm not entirely sure how this will come out. It may not actually be that difficult to get out. So this little JRC dude, that is an AM FM demodulator. So that's somehow gonna be taking the RF signal and changing it into a usable audio signal. All right, so this little dude in here, from my research, is a volume control IC. So presumably this is how they're controlling the volume using the uh, sort of digital interface. And then this thing over here is a PLL clock. Now, I'm not entirely sure how a scanner works or how any kind of radio like this works to receive, but what I'm assuming they do is they set this PLL to whatever frequency you wanna receive at, and then somehow they use that frequency to tune the rest of the circuit to receive at that frequency. But uh, like I said, I am not an expert in, well, anything. Anyway, that's my guess as to how this works. 
And then in this area, I'm assuming what we have is some sort of, you know, RF preamp type stuff. And then we do have a trimmer here. I'm assuming that's like a uh, variable inductor. And the crystal oscillator over here seems like kind of an odd value, but it's apparently 21.3 megahertz. I'm not really sure what this guy is, but it's got a sticker over it. Another thing I'll notice about this board is it looks like it has uh, OK written on it up here, which uh, apparently that means it's been tested. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and try to reassemble this thing and we'll see if it still works. All right, so it's now back together and it's time for the moment of truth. So let's go ahead and plug in power to this thing and it should say charge or it's just going to say scan apparently. We have sound from the speaker. That's a good sign. We should have a backlight for the LCD. There we go. Also, I do want to note, if you uh, do this, when you put it back together, make sure you wipe off the uh, LCD and the, the plastic that uh, protects it on the inside, because otherwise when you put it back together, there's no way to clean that. So it does appear that it can run off the batteries as well. I just unplugged that, but evidently my batteries are pretty much dead. And it looks like we can still receive stuff. So that's good. Make sure that all of our buttons work. So we have hold, scan, it's gonna go into different bands and the batteries just died. When I plug it in, it says charge, so that's a good sign. All right, so everything on this appears to still be working, including the LCD, so I would consider this a success. So anyway, if you enjoyed that little teardown, go ahead and click on the like button. If you have any comments, go ahead and leave those down below as well. And if you wanna see more content from this channel, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.